Better late than never, I've got my hands on this, a production Nokia E75. Their take on the whole side sliding QWERTY genre. And it's very much a tale of some, some lovely design touches let down, unfortunately, by the overall form factor. The same form factor wasn't a big success in the Windows Mobile world, where HTC's non-touch side slider has been largely ridiculed. Uh, it will do better here, but after the sleek, minimalist elegance of the Nokia 5800, the iPhone, the Omnia HD and others, the sheer number of buttons on the E75 67 comes as a rude shock. Some of those buttons are of course down to the QWERTY keyboard, it's true, but most of the rest do rather jar. Yes, it's good to have two form factor options, but 67 buttons is a heavy price to pay. Still onwards, the keyboard is flat topped and with almost no key travel, but it's as good as that on the Nokia 9300, which Nokia claim this is a replacement for. What's nowhere near as good is the screen. The 9300, even back in 2005, had a full VGA width 640 pixel screen. The E75's is quarter VGA only and with a 2.4 inch diagonal. That's a bitter pill to swallow for a quote replacement. A final disappointment on the hardware front is the battery. At only 1000 milliamp hours, it's two thirds the capacity of the battery in the excellent E71 last year. I guess Nokia will say that there have been extra power optimizations, but my tests so far show that their real world life is indeed shorter. But on with the good news. Build quality is good with no slider wobble in the all important closed position. There's a nice metal back plate that the fingerprint magnet front isn't as attractive. A 3.5mm jack on the top is welcome, though there's no port cover. There's a dedicated camera key. Press and hold and this launches the camera app in about 4 seconds. And the results of photos on the E75 are surprisingly good, in good light, better than those from my E90, but somewhere short of those from the N95 and N82, naturally. An even nicer surprise is the video capture quality. This is being shot on the E75 itself. Full VGA and 30 frames a second as per the E90 again. It's not quite N95 level, but for a nominally business phone, it's jolly impressive. There's the usual Nokia business spec of quad band GSM, so it'll work more or less anywhere, Wi-Fi and GPS, and you even get three months free voice navigation thrown in for free. The software bundle is much as per the E71, except that there's S60 3rd edition feature pack 2 under the hood which improves both the general speed and the multimedia handling. Again the full quick office editing suite is included but it's the old version 4 with no Office 2007 support sadly. I've no other complaints about the software other than to note that all the media functions of the E75, music, videos, games, share online, podcasting, are all utterly hidden away and it took even me five minutes to find them. Uh, thanks to the brain dead design decision to hide folders under icons which don't look like folders. Yeah. My overriding impression of the E75 though is of extreme clutter. Clutter in the software, clutter around the D-pad with shortcut keys that aren't trivial to hit. Clutter on the whole top surface. When you've got the phone open in landscape mode and you need to hit one of the two function keys, they're rather hard to hit. And yes, clutter on the screen because of the small quarter VGA resolution. I know Rafe at All About Symbian was so impressed by the E75 he went out and bought one, uh, but for me to use the E75 to its fullest would require one to be a supreme geek, whereas I'm only a humble lieutenant. This is the Nokia E75. So here I am filming in low light conditions. This is actually a bit better than you'd find in your average pub or restaurant. I wanted to find out um, how much difference Xenon Flash makes. I know I keep going on about it, but there's a reason and here's why. Here's a typical snap taken of me raising my drink with the Nokia 5800, with the Nokia E75, with the Samsung G810, with the Nokia 6220C and with my trusty Nokia N82 of course. The last three being the only Xenon Flash equipped smartphones in the world. Um, I think of the three you'll easily agree with me that the N82 is the best. So next time you're down the pub and taking a blurry shot of your friends down the disco and you get a, a travesty of a photo, 
Think Zenon, please. As promised, here's my top 10 games for the Apple iPhone. It's a bit of a personal list and doesn't match up to Apple's own sales stats, but it'll give you a good idea of the sort of games that are possible and working well on the iPhone today. At number 10, Drop 7. Described as a cross between Tetris and Sudoku, I'd add Connect 4 into the mix as well. It's certainly novel and sees you mixing number skill and strategy to keep dropping balls for as long as possible. At number 9, and you're going to need some red blue 3D glasses for this next bit, so pause the video. Air Coaster 3D is a bit of a novelty really, but I couldn't resist it. Just watch the way it generates the 3D views of your roller coaster tracks, of other people's tracks, or just random tracks. Strangely, the screaming option didn't work for me, probably just as well. At number 8, and you can take the 3D glasses off now, is Tap Tap Revenge. I won't say which version, as there are several, including versions for specific artists like Coldplay. Essentially, you tap away in time to some great music soundtracks with the accuracy of your tapping um, determining your score. At number 7, Monopoly Here and Now World Edition. I know, I know, it's only a board game, but have you ever seen a board game so well implemented in 3D? There's no messing with crinkly notes or arguing over the rules. You simply get a sumptuous experience of a classic game. At number 6, it's X-Plane Extreme. Perhaps less of a game than a frighteningly realistic simulation, this lets you take the controls of an F-22 Raptor, a Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird or the B-1 or 2 B-2 Bombers. There's no actual fighting or firing notes, it's all about the flight experience and realism. You get hyper-realistic flight mechanics, superb visuals, air traffic maps and so on. Never mind shooting the baddies, just see if you can land the Raptor when it's night time and raining. At number 5, I'm going to the opposite extreme, a game with nothing but fighting and firing, Wolfenstein 3D. Essentially the first 3D shooter on any platform that has now been ported to the iPhone, along with an inspired touch control interface. Race around each of the 60 levels, blasting every Nazi you see with machine guns and the like. Blood. Spatter. Oh yes. Number 4, it's Slots. It's a simulation again, but this time of Scalextric cars. All the fun of racing the infamous toy cars around the biggest and best tracks you've ever seen, with none of the hassle of buying, building, maintaining and dismantling. Also no having to keep crawling over to pop your car back on the track once a minute. But there's more, you can ride round the tracks and experience them first hand, even at night. Terrific. At number 3 it's Let's Golf, currently the best golf game on the iPhone platform, though I know there are others due to appear soon. With almost Wii-like characters, Let's Golf is still a full golf game with 3D terrain, simulation of everything from wind to gradient to obstacles to ball lion shot spin. There's Wi-Fi wireless multiplayer action too, so you can battle your friends on four realistic international courses. Let's Golf is intuitive, fast and fun. At number two, just missing the top spot, it's fast lane street racing. Starting out as a superlative and smooth car racing sim that was simply incredibly challenging to drive. Uh, there are now extra and easier modes, but trying to win races is only half the story here. Like x you're here to admire the experience, from the car handling to the gorgeous surroundings. 200 miles an hour and you're there! So to the number one, it was my favourite game on other mobile platforms and the iPhone version is just as good. Virtual Pool Mobile is one of the biggest sellers in the App Store and rightly so. Amidst a number of other pool games, this is the one that's not only intuitive to play, the balls behave so accurately you'll actually improve your game in the real world. Experiment with power and cubal spin to achieve perfect positioning if you can. It's addictive, trust me. Well, I've tracked Mr. All About Symbian himself, Rafe Blandford, down to a pub in God's. In God's <laughs> well, I've tracked Mr. All About Symbian himself, Rafe Blandford, down to a pub on <laughs> nearly 25, where we've conveniently met for a quick chat. Rafe, very quickly for the phone show viewers, what is All About Symbian? All About Symbian is a website that covers everything about Symbian phones. So that's S60 from Nokia and also from Samsung, and it does news and reviews, so latest software and in depth uh, hardware reviews. And roughly how many unique visitors do we get a month? We get about 70,000 uh, unique visitors a day, so that's about a million, a million and a half or so a month, depending on how you measure unique visitors. Yeah, it was pretty impressive. I should have mentioned that Rafe does uh, pay me a small stipend for working part-time for the site, so I'm it's rather biased here and thinking it's a wonderful site. Rafe, can I just jump ahead to sort of device news? Um, the N97 is the hot new device everyone's looking forward to. Do you think it will be A, a geek success, and B, a, a commercial success? 
Well, for a geek success, I think that one's a bit difficult to judge because we're still waiting for some details. But I think there will be some disappointments because it's only a five megapixel camera and maybe some of the processor stuff will disappoint people who are interested in those things. However, until we actually get one in our hands, I wouldn't like to make any final judgments. There's also things like capacitive versus resistive screen. But as a commercial success, yes, I do think it will be one, and mainly because it has a lot going for it in terms of what it's capable of doing. It's also a bit different from the N-series that have gone before. So N-series fans who are looking to upgrade and get more out of it, get a touch device, you know, contrast with the difference between the N95 and the N96. The N97 is a big leap forward, lots of new stuff to explore, and so that will attract people. And Nokia is going to be putting an awful lot behind it, and with the Ovi store on it, that will probably be one of the most important selling points. And can I ask you which, which phone you personally have bought and used at the moment, Rafe? I'm currently using the Nokia E75, which is an E-series, which as you can see has got a slide-out keyboard. And I like the dual nature of this device. It enables me to use it as an ordinary phone, but also when I need to, I can keep up with my email on the go. All right. Thanks, Rafe. Cheers. You'll remember that I'm still looking for a sponsor for this show. I'm also looking for donations from anyone able to support by donating a few PayPal dollars or pounds. After the appeal in the last show, £85 of donations came in. Many thanks. Although without either a sponsor or quite a bit more, I'll have to give up the show and go work at something else. I've still got a family to feed. So if you have an idea for a sponsor or if you feel you can donate something, then please do get in touch and watch this space for news. Music